Hi beautiful Supercell sisters and today we're going to talk about Lipton shoes. These are one of my favorite pairs of shoes and again I think a lot of ladies could really benefit from having these and most people don't even know that they exist. So this is half the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is raising awareness, getting us to question, going ah oh, gee do you know what I didn't know that you know you don't know what you don't know right? And so today the Lipton shoes is not about the iced tea, it is in fact about Bruce Lipton. Now he's really quite an amazing man. Um, he's taken quite a bit of stick over the years because of the findings that he's had. But I, you know, there was that whole big drive of uh, the law of attraction. Remember <clears throat> the movie, The Secret, and it was all about, you know, how if you kind of like sit on a rock and you think about stuff and it'll come to you. I mean, I think there's a, a bit of a missing component there. You do need to take quite a bit of action as well as aligning yourself. So it's not, you know, um, I think a lot of people possibly can get disappointed or feel let down if thing, things don't manifest because um, if they don't take the right action in line with their alignment and uh, their focus, then yeah, that's when things can go a bit wobbly for them. Um, but Lipton really... Um, cemented this for me because what he actually found uh, in a scientific way and he's got some really interesting lectures that you can find on YouTube you can just um, research him Bruce Lipton L-I-P-T-O-N and just listen to some of his lectures if you're open to it um, because it talks about um, how on an energetic level we do actually align with what we're actually focusing on and what's actually around us so um, what he found is like um, if you he couldn't understand why I don't even know he was a biochemist I think um, when he put certain things in those petri dishes when you put the cell in the middle okay and the liquid that sits around it uh, some of those uh, cells would would thrive and some of them wouldn't and then what he noticed is like he had to deal with a lot of diseased cells and it was like why is it that uh, some people have diseases and recover and other people have diseases and they don't and he said um you know the uh what is it uh, the there's a term for his genetic oh golly i can't remember the term of it but anyway um effectively we have always had it um ingrained in us or the science until he came along was basically pointing to the fact that if it's in our DNA then that's the way it's going to stay okay so and there I dare say that a lot of people use that as an excuse not to make the effort to do something different that would get them onto the path that they could be on and they'll just go well I'm genetically wired like that so there's no point you know um, like and you know you can hear it in the language that they use like with NLP we listen very closely to the language and it's like what is that um, the linguistics that are giving us the hints that we're stuck in a certain pattern um, and a certain behavioral way and how can we and when we change that language then we have a much stronger chance of changing the story and if we change the story then we can change the path more easily right so that's really a fundamental of what NLP is all about now with that that um, mm, that the understanding of the DNA is that well at some point it doesn't really matter genetically you're just predisposed to going to have that and we Bruce Lipton upset the apple cart, which I thought was fantastic. Um, he then discovered, he said, well, look, there's this disease cell that's the, got this kind of uh, liquid or whatever that's in the Petri dish. If I changed what's in the Petri dish that's surrounding the cell, would that have an impact on how that cell manifests? So, for example, if it was a cancerous cell, and he put whatever the nutritional stuff was around it, okay, and, and good oxygen. What he found is that the cancer died and the cell became healthy, okay? So he upset the apple cart from going, it's not about what's in the cell itself. It's about what's in its environment 
that will trigger and cause that cell to manifest the disease or the emotion or the whatever it is. So this is where, and it was really interesting from an energetic point of view, he said, um, and I've got one vision of like, um, he used it like, you know, the magnets, you know how uh, your DNA twists and you've got um, your, your, I think it's your chromosomal um line patterns that go twisting around that he actually found that if he put something positive on one side of the petri dish they would naturally gravitate towards that and then equally if he put something poisonous inside a healthy cell the cells actually shifted and moved away to the other side of the petri dish pushing it away so he says it's like magnetism you know when you've got a magnet and you push you you flip the magnet and you're pushing them together no matter how hard you push you're never ever going to get them to join are you you know you're just not going to get them to join you flip it so that you've got the the right uh, you know the positives and the negatives joining up the right way once you do that boop, and it's they are actually quite hard to then separate so this is what he's saying is like, it's not just about the liquid, what, if, what is physically in the liquid. I mean, if, it, if it's too much for your brain to handle this, because it kind of blows your mind a little bit when you start thinking about it. It's like, where does that actually stop? Because he went, well, you know, if it's not just the nutrients that's in there, it's the water that's in there. It's the other toxic cells that are in there. It's the thoughts that we have it's the language that we have it's the so if you have got let's go back to I'm going to give you an example make this easier for you to understand um Angelina Jolie okay um big panic because she had the BRCA gene like her mum with breast cancer okay so when when she got to a certain age can't remember what that was she rushed off and had everything taken off and whipped out, okay? Now, here's the understanding um, that if the, the, that cell, that gene would not turn on, the BRCA gene would not turn on as long as you keep the surrounding cells around it positive. So if you eat the foods that are going to feed and, and cause that BRCA gene to manifest, then yes, it will. So if you're going to eat, you know, gluten, sugar, dairy, anything that inflames, anything that's going to, um, you know, create stress, if you live a life of high stress, so you're stressing your system out regularly on an ongoing basis, you put yourself under overwhelm, you over-exercise, you don't get enough balance, you don't meditate, you know, and, 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 and you just keep on doing that, you know, um, eventually that cell's just not going to cope anymore is it it's just going to go look what i'm done with this and it's going to go boof and it's going to open and it's just going to manifest so you know the um you know the 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 concept around this is is that if you don't turn that gene on to begin with you can have the BRCA gene but if you surround that cell with so much positivity like that cancer cell that was sitting in the petri dishes that Bruce Lipton was using, the cancer will actually die or it'll stay dormant, one of those two. So these are, there are some um, gene types that you can't get rid of, but they stay dormant, but they just won't manifest. And then be vigilant as well. Like, you know, make sure that you're staying on top of your healthy regime, that you've got that healthy environment. And if you don't, Get on top of it right at the beginning. Go, right, okay, now I've got to change my lifestyle. Now I've got to, you know, um, I am in a, a state of overwhelm. I'm not, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not coping with this. What do I do? Do I go get coaching? Do I go do more breathing exercises? Do I do, you know, um, eat healthier? Or do I go away and have a break? I mean, but at least then you're conscious of, oh, yes, okay, I'm on to you, you know, which is quite opposite the quite often the opposite of what actually happens normally you know it's that little 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 that surrounds the cell and eventually once you've added all of that up the cell just collapsed because it can't handle it anymore so that Lipton um, cell uh, environment is absolutely key now on a bigger level we are cells we are a bunch of 
millions of cells that sit in our body okay so we're actually living organisms that are made up of a combination of multiple cells okay so what are we affected by our environment okay so if you have got toxic people in your life if you are filling your body with toxic food toxic drink if you're doing exercise that is too toxic like you're overdoing it or you're doing not enough of it okay that could be toxic for you it could be that um, you're in a work environment that is so stressful that you're absolutely burnt out and on your knees by the end of the day. Maybe you're in a relationship that's toxic, you know. Maybe it's that, you know, you're not coping with the kids and you're not getting support. Maybe it's that you don't have kids and you're giving yourself a hard time. Now we're going into the internal toxic talk. So this again is all about that internal parrot rhetoric that's going on. It's like, this is why all of these little steps, these little shoes, recognizing, oh, that's another little toxic, that's another toxic pair of shoes there. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I had those. You know, um, how often am I wearing my overeating shoes or my overexercising shoes or doing the wrong kind of exercise shoes? How, how can you change it if you don't know it? You know, you've, this is half the thing. You've got, to be, you, you've got to be aware. You know, this is the whole point of this whole channel and the group is to go, oh, do you know what? I didn't even know I wore those. And do you know what? Um, yeah, there is a, you know, a dis-ease that runs in our family. And maybe I should go and get, a, you know, a genetic test done to find out. Or, you know, I know that we've got, I don't know, allergies in our family. Maybe I'll go and get an HK session with Vicky Jane or, you know, go to an HK, you know, a health kinesiologist somewhere near me or get a hair and, uh, uh, you know, analysis test or whatever it is, you know, whatever floats your boat, your shoes, your way, go and get the test done and go, okay, do you know what, if I... I am stressed at work um, and I have got, you know, I'm doing too much because I'm a busy mum or I'm a busy career lady, whatever the case may be, or both, you know, um, and, and, and let's identify what all those toxic shoes are that are sitting around you, all right? And then you can decide whether you want to keep them in your life or not. And sometimes we can't. So then it's a case of how do we manage um, people that are toxic in our life or situations like work or uh, whatever that are toxic in our life how do we manage that but first of all you've got to know what those toxic scenarios are and you've got to go right that doesn't work for me and you know what I'm, I, I'll never feel good at the end of that conversation hanging out with that friend or that group of people I always you know it really brings me down and I just don't feel good inside and it's checking with your internal barometer again you know are you getting goosebump shoes about someone like they're a bit off and you like giving them the benefit of the doubt and then you walk away and you go actually yeah I, I never feel good you know I never feel good with that that person now if you do enough of that and they are in your environment all the time how healthy is your cell going to be you are the cell you're in the center of all of this chaos what's going to happen it's just a matter of time right where something there's going to be this is either within your body or emotionally or both or it's going to be where you're going to have breakdowns somewhere with relationships with family with whatever with work whatever it is and then you're going to get to the end of your life and you're going to have all these things going on or you can go do you know what I'm on to this now and now today I'm going to change that I didn't even think about lips and shoes I didn't even know they existed and now I'm going to examine them. I'm going to go, what's the toxic things in my Petri dish that I need to get rid of? And what can I replace them with? So this is the whole reason why not only is the channel all about building awareness, but it's also now getting you into a community like the Vicky Jane community, the Super Soul Sisters, where you're in an environment that's supportive. It's in the environment with positive shoe wearers just like you. So we've got the Petri dish with all this other toxic BS going on around you, okay? You can opt to stay in that. And look, there'll be some of you where, you you know, that's not the case. I mean, like I, I'm going extreme here, but there will be 
none of us have a perfect life. There are toxic people in our life, whether we like it or not. They come into our lives temporarily and move, you know, or some of them are here for longest periods of, of, of time. And it's up to us to learn our lesson from why we've attracted those people. And again, you see, this is your thought pattern, which is what Bruce Lipton was talking about with the law of attraction stuff. On a scientific level, it really connected it for me on how that actually works. Because if your focus is connected on the positive, you are more likely with your reticular activating system. And, you know, we're going to talk about the RAS, RAS issues and RAS glasses at some stage. Um, where, you know, when you, when you focus on the positive, you don't actually notice the negative. So by virtue of that, you're a very positive person. You're more likely to attract positive people. So I think I was talking to you about uh, the other day where, you know, I went over and I thought that I saw someone, he's a meter man, and he used to live across the road from us, really nice guy. Um, and I went over to say hello um, because I recognized the car and um, it turned out it wasn't him. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I thought it was my old next door neighbor. I just wanted to come and say hello. I said, he drives, um, he drives this car too. And he goes, well, it's not this car. And you know, it was in that moment, it was like, boom, I'm not talking to that person anymore. It's like, okay. And I just said, you know what? You have a really good day. I said, I know it's a, it's a similar car to yours and you have a really neat day today. Now you see, if I had been in a negative state, if I had been in a negative environment, like, and I let too much toxicity in and I was at that stage, there was a bit of toxic stuff going on for me. Um, and, and I obviously had attracted, I mean, I actually walked up to him. So I attracted that. And then I had this interaction and I immediately knew this is a toxic environment. I don't want this in my Petri dish. These are not my Lipton shoes. You're not welcome in this world. I didn't, I didn't berate him. I didn't engage him. I could have taken him on. We could have had a full on bull, you know, like what's your, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What a stink ass attitude is that? You know, like get over yourself, you know? Oh, you go and have a good day now. You know, get sarcastic. There's all sorts of way I could have responded. But I chose to remain positive and I went, you know what, you have a really good day and you know, I'll be sure to make sure that I check the car next time that it is actually the person that I was wanting to say hi. Anyway, have a great day and I moved swiftly on. I didn't let it come into my Petri dish. I didn't let it come into my little world. This is a uh, no thank you zone. You know, I had my no thank you shoes on. It was like, not for me, you can, <laughs> you can have that. Um, doesn't work for me, that attitude. So by virtue of that, you land up as well attracting positive people because, you know, there's people who are born with like natural smiles on their faces. I mean, like they just, I've got people in my life and it's just like, oh, my, actually my nephew's one of these and his wife and they've got two kids and honestly, they have got like permanent grins all the time. And it's just like, life just doesn't seem to phase them. Things just bounce right off them. They breathe through life. I'm sure they have challenges, but you would never know it. Whether they're in denial or not, I don't know. But what's amazing is that that has now reflected in their kids. And their kids are babies. Like, you know, from the day they were born, those little kids have got these beaming smiles. It's almost like it's genetically encoded now in their offspring. And it's just like they look for the happiness. They look for the good. Okay. And by virtue of that, they attract positive people. Now, negative people will attract negative. So you've got to choose which ones you want in your world and recognize when those people are wearing their negative shoes and where they're wearing their positive shoes and whether you want to want line up for, with that. And what you'll land up finding is just like those magnets, the more positive you are, the more positive experiences you're actually going to start attracting. Okay. And that's just, that's the energetic level that Bruce Lipton goes to. It doesn't just stop with the physical things that are in your Petri dish, in your Lipton shoes, in your immediate environment. This is why it's so important that we find people that are like-minded on our path, which is what the Vicky Jane community is all about. That is that whole thing about I'm coming in, but not expecting others to always be there for me. It's like, what can you bring to the group? What joy can you bring to the group? What support can you bring to the group? And then you can also ask, well, I'm strong in these areas. This is where you're strong in those areas. Can you help me with that? Pair up, team up, 
get like-minded shoes walking on the path you know they may not be the exact same path but they could walk alongside you on parallel paths and it could be that one's wanting to focus on physical stuff it might be that another person is you know a really successful business person uh, you know and uh, in a particular area and you go like uh, you know how, how did you do that can can you support me with that and I'll support you with this so go in with that how can I bring something positive to you in the relationship and have it as a two-way junction not where you just change and actually do the reach outs so when you start doing that we actually have a community of people going man that you know I just left I you know I had such a good time with that person or you know I'd love to have it where we get to the point in the Vicky Jane group is like do you know what I I'm so glad that I joined that group because like you know I met all these amazing women that I just never would have I mean it's free it doesn't cost anything why not and how fantastic not only am I learning stuff I get inspired I'm uplifted every single day I've got you know people who get what I'm talking about um, if I start talking about shoes they understand what I'm talking about um, they're dedicated to personal growth they know that they want to to you know get out of these um, you know they're now conscious of what Lipton shoes are so when I go out somewhere and this is what will happen um, you know I've got some more advanced students and it's really great because when we go out and we meet people who are not on the journey and don't want to be part of it I mean as I mentioned to you before there's only like eight percent of the entire world's population who will even listen to this and two percent of that uh, I call them my two percent clubs will actually engage follow through and be really dedicated to making stuff happen now when you start getting into that two percent when my two percent come out with me and they go wow that was interesting look at that they are Enneagram this and they are you know they wear these kind of shoes and uh, oh you know they've got this toxic pair of shoes and that toxic pair of shoes and they've got this positive pair of shoes and that but but they're unconscious they don't even know they have got no clue but you've sussed that all out by having a one hour lunch with them how fantastic is that now what can you do with that you can either empower them or you can say look you know uh, this is how you can grow that area more you could throw out um, an invite and say why don't you listen to this you might find that this will be um, change your life and point them to the Vicky Jane channel or if they're ready they might want to cross over into the Vicky Jane Facebook group and actually get some support from the Super Soul Sisters how fantastic you know so I just love it I just love all this stuff I hope you have too um, if you love this please will you just do a little you know even if it's like uh, just a like or a love heart whatever works for you um, and share this with someone who, who you know will go gee do you know what that is actually interesting I've never thought of it like that and you might want to go and um, have a look at Bruce Lipton's stuff um, I'll see if I can find some links and, and add them here for you in the posts um, and in the channel um, and then yeah just do hashtag Bruce Lipton because you're going to now start practicing that so anyone who's looking to um, consciously adopt the Bruce Lipton shoes you can start looking for other people in the Facebook group um, in the Facebook channel um, Vicky Jane where you can actually go right who else wants to adopt these and sometimes you know you forget and you go oh have you noticed <laughs> that your Bruce Lipton shoes are surrounded by toxic and these are the toxics that I've picked up or it's like oh wow you've really adopted these really great ones great change yay well done congratulations encouragement let's take the next step in your shoes on your path going your way hooray well done you Thank you so much, everybody. Love you dearly. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Take care now. Bye.